Pressure ulcers are one of the most common health problems of people with spinal cord injury. 80% of people with spinal cord injury will have a pressure ulcer at some point in their lives and 30% will have more than one. Pressure ulcers can also be one of the most debilitating health problems. The negative consequences of having a pressure ulcer can vary from a limited ability to participate in daily activities to months of extended bed rest to even death in the most serious of cases. Fortunately, many pressure ulcers can be prevented. This segment is intended to help people learn how to prevent pressure ulcers. It will go over the causes of pressure ulcers, how to identify the different types or stages, and what to do if they appear. The more you know about pressure ulcers, the better able you'll be to prevent them from occurring or minimize their impact on your quality of life. It all starts with your skin. The skin is your body's largest organ. It has two layers. The epidermis is the thin outer layer and the dermis is the thicker layer below the epidermis. Your skin helps regulate your body temperature, serves as your body's way of feeling touch, heat and cold, and protects your body from the bacteria and other microbes in the environment around you. A pressure ulcer is known by many names. A pressure sore, a decubitus ulcer, a bed sore, or simply skin breakdown. All of these names refer to an area of damaged tissue that develops when the skin and the underlying muscle and fat below it are compressed between a bony part of the body and an outside surface for an extended period of time. This compression cuts off blood flow to the skin and underlying tissues and leads to damage. While anyone can get a pressure ulcer, people with spinal cord injury are at an extremely high risk because the normal functions of your body's nervous system are impaired after the injury. Under normal circumstances, the nervous system helps to protect the skin's health without the person realizing it. Here's an example of how it normally works. When you sit down in a chair, your skin is compressed between the surface of the chair and the bone beneath your skin. Your skin has nerves that tell your brain there's pressure. If you sit in the same position for a long period of time without moving, the nerves send warning messages to your brain. It interprets the messages as a feeling of discomfort from the pressure restricting the blood flow to the skin. Your brain then sends messages to direct your body to change position to allow blood flow to return. Most people who sit or lay down will move hundreds of times over a short period of time to shift their weight off of any one spot. If you have a spinal cord injury, messages sent from below the level of the injury may not reach the brain. Therefore, there's no warning of discomfort or potential damage, and your brain cannot direct your body to move to relieve the pressure. What can happen? you can start to get skin damage and a pressure ulcer. Early signs of a pressure ulcer are reddish or pinkish skin, bruising, or a blister. The skin may appear shiny or have a different texture. Early signs of a pressure ulcer may be missed in those with dark skin. In these cases, look for areas of skin that are darker than the surrounding skin or purple or bluish. If you see early signs of a pressure ulcer, it is important to look for the source of the pressure. Check your wheelchair cushion, your clothes, and the mattress of your bed. If you don't identify what's causing the pressure, then the pressure ulcer could get worse. It's important to realize what you see on the surface is often the smallest part of the pressure ulcer. There may be more damage below the surface. Therefore, if you have early signs of a pressure ulcer, take it seriously. Pressure ulcers are typically described in stages and categories based on the degree of tissue damage observed. There are four stages of pressure ulcers ranging from stage 1 to stage 4. These stages are based on which layers of skin and tissue are damaged. There are also two categories of pressure ulcer, unstageable and deep tissue injury. Let's review these stages and categories in greater detail. In a stage 1 pressure ulcer, the skin is not broken, but is red or discolored. When you press it, it stays red and does not lighten or turn white. 
The redness or change in color does not fade within 30 minutes after pressure is removed. If you have a stage one pressure ulcer, it is important you stay off the area and remove all pressure. Keep the area clean and dry. Be sure to eat adequate protein, vitamins and minerals and speak with your healthcare provider. If the pressure ulcer is in the area of the sitting bones, ischial tuberosities, then check your cushion and stay out of the wheelchair. If it is on the tailbone, sacrum, then don't lie on your back in bed. You will also want to check the back of your wheelchair and the seams of your clothes to make sure there's nothing rubbing against your skin. If the pressure ulcer is on your hips, then avoid lying on that side in bed. Check the armrests, the clothing guards, or the tires on your wheelchair to make sure they're not pressing or rubbing against your skin. A stage one pressure ulcer can usually be resolved in approximately three days if all the pressure is taken off. Whenever you have a pressure ulcer, it's important you be in contact with your healthcare provider. A stage two pressure ulcer is a shallow break in the skin with damage into the epidermis, the topmost layer of the skin. The ulcer may also extend partially into the dermis, that second layer of skin. The wound may be moist and also may drain or leak fluid. If you have a stage two pressure ulcer, then you should follow the same steps as for a stage one pressure ulcer and stay off the area and remove all pressure. You should contact your healthcare provider right away. Monitor the wound closely and take pictures and measure at least weekly. A stage two pressure ulcer may take anywhere from three days to three weeks to heal. Larger ulcers may take longer. A stage three pressure ulcer extends to the dermis and into the fatty tissue below the skin, but without exposing any muscle or bone. This wound usually requires treatment by a wound care specialist and a person with a stage three pressure ulcer on the sacrum will most likely require a specialty mattress. It may take months to heal. A stage four pressure ulcer extends into the muscle below the fat and can extend as far down as the bone. This wound is also treated by a wound care specialist and surgery is often needed for treatment. People with a stage four pressure ulcer on their sacrum will most likely need a special pressure relieving mattress or bed. Stage four pressure ulcers could take months to heal depending on their size and how they are managed. The unstageable pressure ulcer is referred to when the wound cannot be seen fully because it is covered by an area of dead tissue called eschar. The area may appear with yellow, tan, gray, green, brown, or black in color or appear as a scab. The wound is unstageable because the underlying damage is unknown unless the dead tissue or scab wears away to expose the actual damage. This should be evaluated by your healthcare provider. You should not remove this dead tissue that can often look like a scab by yourself. Suspected deep tissue injury is not a broken area of the skin and refers to the presence of a purple or maroon colored area of skin or may appear like a blood filled blister. The surrounding area may be firm, mushy, boggy, warmer or cooler when compared to nearby tissue. A deep tissue injury may be hard to see on people with a dark skin tone. The wound may eventually become covered by thin scab that may be open to expose damage to the layers of the skin and tissue. For people with spinal cord injury, the most common cause of pressure ulcers is prolonged pressure to the skin in an area where bones are close to the surface. Here's how it happens. When you sit down in a chair, your skin and underlying muscle and fat are compressed between the surface of the chair and the bone beneath your skin. The pressure restricts the blood flow. You sit in the same position for a long period of time without moving. The area becomes damaged. Some other situations include lying too long without turning, not enough padding on chairs or beds, tight clothing or shoes, and sitting or lying on hard objects such as catheter connectors and clamps, bulky seams, or buttons on mattresses. 
The most common area for pressure ulcers is the ischial tuberosities, the bones that people sit on. This is especially true for people who have had a spinal cord injury for greater than one year. The second most common area is the sacrum or tailbone. Therefore, it is important to use a good wheelchair cushion when sitting on your wheelchair and to have a proper bed mattress to support the bony parts of your body when you sleep. Other pressure points when sitting upright in a wheelchair include the shoulder blades, the back of the knees, and the feet. Common pressure points when lying flat in bed include the heels, tailbone, and elbows, as well as the shoulder blades and head. Common pressure points when lying on your side in bed include the ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, and ears. It is common to develop pressure ulcers from skin that is damaged by shearing forces. In fact, one should think of pressure ulcers as press shear ulcers, or tissue damage that is caused by pressure plus shear. Shearing is the force that occurs when the skin moves one way and the bone underneath it moves another way. Here's an example. If you transfer to and from your car and wheelchair, you may slide your body instead of lifting your body. Your skin can be stretched between the surface and your bone. The damage to the skin can quickly worsen, especially if you sit on the damaged area. This is the beginning of a pressure ulcer. Shearing can occur in other situations, such as slouching while sitting, sitting or lying at an angle, or during a muscle spasm. In reality, any other damage to the skin can lead to a pressure ulcer if the damage occurs in a bony area where there's continued pressure. Pressure ulcers can develop from excess moisture as well as cuts, bumps, burns, scrapes, and rubbing. Prevention of pressure ulcers is your best defense against getting them. In fact, most pressure ulcers are preventable if you make skin care a priority. Pressure reliefs, also commonly referred to as weight shifts, are essential to relieving pressure on your skin. A pressure relief is the act of shifting your weight to reposition your body and keep the blood flowing to your skin. Anytime you're sitting, you should do pressure reliefs every 15 minutes for a duration of at least two minutes. The pressure relief technique you use will depend on your level of injury, the type of wheelchair you use, and how much movement and strength you have in your arms and shoulders. If you're unable to perform independent pressure reliefs, then someone can tilt your wheelchair back while supporting you. If you have a power wheelchair with a tilt feature, this can be used to change your body position for a pressure relief. Regardless of which type of wheelchair you use, your tilt angle should be greater than 45 degrees and you should perform your pressure relief for at least three minutes to effectively relieve pressure. If you have a power wheelchair that has an elevating footrest, then you might use the recline and elevating footrest features in combination with tilt to provide the greatest pressure relief. However, this may cause shearing over the buttocks and the low back, which can cause more skin problems. Therefore, be sure to check with your healthcare provider or a wheelchair seating specialist before performing this maneuver. If you have some upper body control, some options for pressure reliefs include the anterior, lateral, or push-up weight shifts. The anterior weight shift is performed by leaning forward and holding the position for two minutes. How far forward you need to lean to make sure you get adequate pressure relief will vary from individual to individual. However, you want to make sure to lean forward enough so you remove pressure from the bony ischial tuberosities. You will also need to make sure that your casters are turned in the forward position when you lean your weight forward over your casters. If you're not careful, you can flip your wheelchair forward. The lateral weight shift is performed by leaning side to side and maintaining that position for approximately two minutes. The keys to success for using this technique are to make sure you lean each direction enough to get the weight completely off the opposite side for the two minutes. If you have the strength to lift your body, you might do a push-up weight shift. You do this by gripping your tires with your hands and pressing your body up completely off your seat. 
you should hold this position for approximately two minutes. As you can imagine, this type of weight shift requires a lot of strength. It can also be fatiguing and hard on the shoulders, especially if you're doing it repeatedly throughout the day. People are discouraged from doing this type of weight shift if they can help it, so as to avoid the risk of shoulder and wrist injuries. You also need to prevent pressure ulcers while you're in bed. You might sleep on a sheepskin or fleece soft pillow top or air mattress and use pillows and foam for added padding. Do not use folded towels or blankets. Make sure your legs and feet are not crossed. You want to avoid sleeping with your head elevated at an angle of greater than 30 degrees because it can place too much pressure on your buttocks and lower back areas. Lastly, if you have little soft tissue cushioning over your hips, you should not sleep on your side for extended time periods. You may also need to follow a regular schedule of turning at night, especially right after your spinal cord injury. In the beginning, you may need to turn every two to four hours. However, this may change the further out from your injury and may vary from individual to individual or change as one ages with a spinal cord injury. Your healthcare provider will be able to discuss with you your specific needs. It is also important to note that each person's skin tolerance is different and can change over time. Please remember that skin tolerance and risk for pressure ulcer development can change if you are sick, if you're not eating well, if you smoke, have changes in posture, or you're sitting or lying on a different surface than normal. Healthy skin requires a lifelong commitment to daily care. Here are also some common sense approaches for keeping your skin healthy. You should get in the habit of visually inspecting your skin at least twice per day. When you first wake up and at the end of your day when you get into bed, you should look for problems such as redness, darkened areas, blisters, bruises, cracked, scraped or dry skin. You also need to make sure your skin does not have areas that feel hard, swollen or warm to the touch. This may all be a sign of a pressure ulcer. You should closely inspect the areas that are at the greatest risk for pressure sores. These are areas where bony areas of the body are close to the surface of the skin. As mentioned earlier, this includes the buttocks, ischial tuberosities, the lower back, tailbone or sacrum, heel of the foot, hips, elbows, knees, ankles, toes, and bony areas of the foot. You may need to use a mirror to check areas that are hard to see. Or you should have a trained attendant or caregiver check your skin for you. You can also take a picture or have someone do it for you if you have a camera. If there's a skin problem, you should stay off the area and contact your health care provider to see if you need treatment. Aside from being in one position too long, the single worst thing you can do to your skin is expose yourself to cigarette smoke. Quit smoking if you smoke and avoid being around others who smoke. Make sure you have the proper equipment. You need to have your wheelchair and cushion prescribed by your doctor and measured and fitted by a trained therapist. If available, get a pressure map seating evaluation to determine which cushion is best for you and you can learn which pressure relief techniques are most effective. You need always to sit up nice and straight in your wheelchair. Sliding or slouching can damage your skin. Be very careful during transfers. Lift yourself up without dragging or scraping your bottom during your transfer. Get help if you need it. Keep your skin clean and dry. When bathing, use mild soap and warm water. Rinse and dry thoroughly. Pay particular attention to keeping the genital area and skin folds clean and dry. If you have a bowel or bladder accident, change your clothes quickly and wash off the stool or urine. Wear clothes that fit. Avoid pants with thick seams, rivets, or bulky pockets. Make sure there are no folds or wrinkles in areas of pressure. Wear shoes that are one to two sizes longer and wider if your feet swell during the day. If you bump your feet a lot, Wear shoes with stiffer toes to protect your feet. Make sure you drink plenty of water. It helps keep your skin pliable, soft, and supple. Weight management is very important. If you're underweight, you may have less natural padding to protect your body areas. If you're overweight, it may be harder to shift your weight and do pressure reliefs. If you have problems with pressure ulcers, you may benefit from asking yourself a few questions. Is my clothing or shoes tight in that area? 
Did they rub or pinch my skin? Do I have any new or changed equipment? Is there something wrong with my cushion? Is it properly inflated or bottoming out? Are the materials or seat covers starting to deteriorate or break down? Is there any change in my job or activities that cause a change in my routine of doing pressure reliefs? Answers to these simple questions may provide you with a starting point to solve problem issues. Finally, if you develop a pressure ulcer, notify your health care provider as soon as possible. Your health care provider will help determine a plan of action. This will depend upon the size and severity, the stage of the wound. Finding the cause is very important. Treatment may consist of increasing pressure reliefs, limited sitting time if it is located at the surfaces that have increased pressure in the sitting position, to full bed rest. There are many treatments in terms of ointments, gels, lotions, and dressings. Your healthcare provider can help you determine which treatment is most appropriate for you. At times, referral to a wound care specialist is warranted as well as the need for plastic surgery. These options are very individualized and will be discussed by your health care provider. A lifelong approach to healthy skin is essential. Remember, the most important thing you can do is prevent the pressure ulcer from developing. Good luck and good health.